Just to put things in context, uh, I will give a brief update of the situation in Cabo de Gado and then go into my viewpoint on the blacklisting of the ISIS in Mozambique. The situation in Mozambique remains uh, dire as uh, militants in Cabo de Gado continue to launch gruesome attacks against civilians. Even though it is the rainy season, when life is generally slow in Mozambique, militants remain active. According to the armed conflict location and event data, ACLEF, nearly 100 violent events have occurred in which over 200 people have died between 1 January and 14 March this year. The total since 2017 now stands at 829 violent attacks with 2,658 deaths, 1,341 of which have been civilians. The recent targeting of children, particularly the beheading of young boys and girls, is an indication of the horror and how fast the security situation has deteriorated in Cabo de Gado. The recent BBC reports include tales of kidnappings and beheadings of young girls and boys in Cabo de Gado. Amnesty International has documented some, some of these atrocities. The number of displaced people continue to increase at an alarming pace. The figure is nearly 700,000 people displaced. According to the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, 840,000 people need emergency food aid in Cabo de Gado, Nyasa, and Nampula. Uh, again, through this, you can understand the, the situation in which we are dealing with. The announcement on 10 March by the U.S. State Department of the designation of the Islamic State in the Democratic Republic of Congo, ISIS DRC, and ISIS Mozambique came at an opportune moment when the insurgency in Mozambique desperately needs a boost. The designation of Abu Yasser Hassan, also known as Abu Kim, as a, a Tanzanian national and ISIS Mozambique under the 2001 executive order carries several implications. Before delving into, into these implications or the advantages and disadvantages of the blacklisting, let me, let's briefly look at who Hassan and ISIS Mozambique are. There is very little information about Hassan, a previous Alusuna commander who went by the same name, is believed to have been killed in combat in 2018. Even the Inspector General of Police of Tanzania does not even uh, have information on who Hassan is, which means that the Tanzanian authorities do not also know him. What we know so far is that he is a national of Tanzania, between 38 and 40 years old, is famous for leading the operation that captured the port of Musimboada Praia in northern Mozambique, and the operations in Tanzania in the Intuara region, neighboring Mozambique. But nothing is known about his character, temperament, and philosophy. ISIS Mozambique is actually Alusuna Wajama, the militant Islamist group locally known as Ashabar, which is believed to have been formed in Musimboada prior in 2007, but which only began violent operations in early October 2017, when militants stormed police stations in Musimboada prior. It was only in 2019 that the emergence between ISIS and Alusuna began to occur, first through a photograph of six gun-wielding youth, then through claim of responsibility for attacks by the Islamic State. So we were never really introduced to the emergence or the pledge of allegiance that is so customary with those affiliates that joined the Islamic State. The lack of details, information on Hassan 
and the, or the supposed leader and on the true link between ISIS and Alu Sunnah to undermine the blacklisting. What therefore are the advantages of the blacklisting? According to the State Department website, the designation means that all property, interests in property or designated individuals or entities that are in the United States or that come within the United States or that come within the possession or control of U.S. persons are blocked. It also means the prohibition of any transaction or dealing by U.S. persons or within the United States in property, including but not limited to the making or receiving of any contribution or funds, goods or services, or to or for the benefit of individuals or entities designated under uh, executive order. Given the U.S. global reach and cooperation with a vast number of countries, particularly in Africa or in Southern Africa, the designation is expected to raise maximum awareness on ISIS Mozambique. This could have both good and bad effects. A key impact of the designation will increase U.S. involvement in the fight against terrorism in Cabo de Gado. This could benefit both. This could benefit broader U.S. intelligence in ISIS, on ISIS, and Islamist groups around the world, especially in Africa, such as Al Shabaab in Somalia, Boko Haram in the Lake Chad Basin. Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, the Al Nusra uh, groups, JNIM in West Africa, based in Mali, which are already being combated by the US government. The US will be able to bring intelligence from this group, and this benefit will be in, the, in terms of tactics, mobility, and networking of this group, which could benefit the fight against the uh, Islamic State in Mozambique. For example, we know that Boko Haram uh, had actually sent some militants there. We don't know other groups that may have sent militants. Probably cooperation with the U.S. government and U.S. use of intelligence on these groups to benefit those who are fighting against it. A key impact of the designation, I believe, will also help to convince especially U.S. allies in the region who still do not believe that the crisis in Cabo de Gado is terrorism. So with this designation, we believe that many will not come to accept that those who are causing mayhem in Cabo de Gado are actually terrorists. 